Ad hominem may be the most famous logical fallacy, attacking the messenger rather than the message. If person A says X, let's assassinate person A's character to demonstrate X is wrong. Sometimes that strategy can be emotionally effective, but when we stop to think about the reasoning behind it, the case falls apart. If you say the sky is blue and I say you're wrong because you've committed tax fraud, that response really doesn't have anything to do with the color of the sky. But that idea also works in reverse. If you say the sky is green and I say, hey, listen to this guy, he pays his taxes in full and on time every single year. Does one really have anything to do with the other? Consider the controversy of the week. Mr. and Mrs. Kizer Khan, a Pakistani immigrant gold star family who lost their son, Army Captain Humayun Khan, while serving in Iraq in 2004. Kizer Khan spoke with his wife at his side at the Democratic National Convention on Thursday night. Khan used most of his time to attack Donald Trump on issues of immigration and respect for minorities. Donald Trump consistently smears the character of Muslims. He disrespects other minorities, women, judges, even his own party leadership. He vows to build walls and ban us from this country. Also for his personal lack of sacrifice. You have sacrificed nothing. And to ask Donald Trump if he has ever read the Constitution, prompting wild applause. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? I will, I will gladly lend you my copy. Fair enough, it's your political convention. Use it to make whatever political points you like. But if you attack someone directly, you should expect a response. And Donald Trump delivered that response in an interview that aired Sunday morning on ABC's This Week, first addressing the cons themselves. I don't know if you saw this speech, but uh, there was a man named Kaiser Khan speaking at the Democratic Convention. He said you wouldn't have even let his son in America. He yet. doesn't know. He doesn't know that. I saw him. He was, uh, you know, very emotional and probably looked like uh, a nice guy to me. His wife, uh, if you look at his wife, she was standing there. She had nothing to say. She probably, maybe she wasn't allowed to have anything to say. You tell me, but plenty of people have written that. And personally, uh, I watched him. I wish him the best of luck, George. Now, I grant the one statement about the wife's silence was in poor taste. Trump should have avoided getting personal like that. But the truth is, it was no more personal than the cons were themselves in a prior interview making charges that Trump is a schoolyard bully. His bullying, schoolyard bullying. That he's not a patriot. You are about to sink the ship of the patriot Republicans. And that he's an existential threat to our society. His threat to our democracy, our decency, our foundation. It's Trump's personal swipe that's getting all the play, but the fact of the matter is the bulk of the interview was issue focused, not person focused responding directly to the policy questions Khan raised. What would you say to that father? Well, I'd say we've had a lot of problems with radical Islamic terrorism. That's what I'd say. We have a lot of problems where you look at San Bernardino, you look at Orlando, you look at the World Trade Center, you look at so many different things. You look at what happened to the priest over the weekend in Paris where his throat was cut, 85-year-old beloved Catholic priest. You look at what happened in Nice, France a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'd say you got to take a look at that because something's going on and it's not good. Trump also responded directly to Khan's charge that he has sacrificed nothing. He said you have sacrificed nothing. How would you answer that, Father? What sacrifice have you made for your country? I think I've made a lot of sacrifices. Uh, I work very, very hard. I've created thousands and thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs, uh, built great structures. I've done, I've had, I've had tremendous success. Uh, I think those are sacrifices. Lot. Oh, sure. I think they're sacrifices. I think when I can employ thousands and thousands of people, take care of their education, take care of so many things, even in military. I mean, I was very responsible, along with a group of people, for getting the Vietnam Memorial built in downtown Manhattan, which to this day people thank me for. Uh, I raised and I have raised millions of dollars for the vets. I'm helping the vets a lot. 
I think my popularity with the vets is through the roof, far greater than hers. She's done nothing. All she's done is tell everybody that the vets are in good shape, they're fine, and they're not fine. People are waiting in line for seven days to see a doctor. She thinks it's fine. Now, whether you agree with Kizer Khan or you agree with Donald Trump or neither, how would you characterize this exchange? I'd say something like military father at DNC makes case against Trump. Trump responds. Maybe something like Trump refutes charges made by military father at DNC. Something that describes what happened. An allegation and a response and who was involved. How about these characterizations though? Donald Trump criticizes Muslim family of slain US soldier drawing ire. Donald Trump's slander of Captain Humayun Khan's family is horrifying even for Trump. Donald Trump's attacks on Khan family distract from negative Hillary Clinton news. Without context or detail, all of these headlines imply Donald Trump picked out a gold star family to attack without provocation they also imply Donald Trump dishonored the service of Humayun Khan, deliberately dishonest given the full context of the interview in question. As we said, that was on Friday, and overnight the Trump campaign put out a statement responding to the controversy. Here's the statement. Captain Humayun Khan was a hero to our country, and we should honor all who have made the ultimate sacrifice to keep our country safe. While I feel deeply for the loss of his son, Mr. Khan, who has never met me, has no right to stand in front of millions of people and claim I have never read the Constitution, which is false, and say many other inaccurate things. And large media outlets have given Kizer Khan a platform to amplify this misperception that Donald Trump, unprovoked, is picking on a military family. For this candidate for presidency to not be aware of the respect of a gold star mother standing there, and he had to take that shot at her, this is height of ignorance. The way he showed disrespect towards the gold star mother of this country, that says it all. Members of his own Republican Party have also condemned Trump. Says Senator Kelly Ayotte, I am appalled that Donald Trump would disparage the cons and that he had the gall to compare his own sacrifices to those of a gold star family. Says Senator Lindsey Graham, this is going to a place where we've never been before to push back against the families of the fallen. Says Representative Mac Thornberry, service to our country is above politics. I believe that each of us are called every day to show our deepest respect and gratitude to all all those who protect our freedom and their families. I would agree with these legislators' comments if they were consistent with what actually happened. If Trump went after the cons for no reason, he didn't. If Trump failed to acknowledge their family's sacrifice, he didn't. If Trump made things unduly personal instead of focusing on the issues the cons raised, he slipped a bit on that one statement, but overall, he didn't. All things considered, the problems with the media and political reaction to this controversy are two. First, you don't get to provoke and then play innocent. You can't take the stage, throw a series of accusations and political debate points at a person, and then when the person responds, put your personal story up as a shield from criticism to smear your target for having the audacity to respond to accusations you made in a debate you invited. And second, you don't get to pretend your personal story makes your political arguments automatically right. The fact is, Kizer Khan's son's sacrifice, while certainly noble and certainly deserving of respect, is wholly irrelevant to the political debate Kizer Khan initiated. We have to be willing to divorce that emotional personal story, as honorable as it is, from his political arguments, and to be honest about how debatable or outright nonsensical his public advocacy is. Examples. Trump said that you viciously attacked him and that he had to respond. What do you think of that? <laughs> that proves the point that showing him the Constitution, there is First Amendment, there is freedom of speech. This candidate amazes me, his ignorance, he can get up and malign the entire nation, the religions, the communities, the minorities, the judges, and yet a private citizen in this political process 
in his candidacy for, for the stewardship of this country, I cannot say what I feel. When did Trump ever say Khan can't speak? He didn't even come close to saying that. It would be an unreachable stretch to claim he even implied it. If criticism and enforced silence are the same thing, it was Khan who tried to silence Trump. It was Khan who initiated the criticism. And it's Khan who by his own bizarre reasoning, doesn't understand the First Amendment. It's a stretch even further to characterize this as a constitutional First Amendment issue anyway. It's a dispute between two citizens. There's no government censorship at play. This is why I showed him that Constitution. Had he read that, he would know what status a gold star mother holds in this nation. This country holds such a person in the highest regard. I actually wonder if Khan has read the Constitution. I have no idea what he means here, or what the basis for his claim even is. There's no mention of military families in the Constitution. I think we all agree a good society should treat them well, but that's not a constitutional issue. The Gold Star family as a concept didn't even exist until the 20th century. This guy calls his opinions constitutional requirements, and we're all just supposed to accept it. I implore those patriotic Americans that would probably vote for Donald Trump in November. I appeal to them not to vote for hatred. So to be clear, not all Muslims are anti-American. Just ask Kizer Khan. But all votes for Donald Trump are hateful. Just ask Kizer Khan. And his political message isn't just repudiation of a candidate, it's also endorsement of another. Vote for the strongest, most qualified candidate, Hillary Clinton. Mr. Khan has a tenuous relationship with facts and truth, but nobody will press him on it for fear of being emotionally insensitive. Each one of his arguments is flimsy at best, outright false at worst, and the fact that his son died in service is equally irrelevant to all of them. This is political grandstanding using the death of a soldier as a shield from rebuttal. While we all appreciate his son's service and his son's sacrifice, that service and that sacrifice is neither an argument for nor an argument against Trump policy proposals. Nobody would ever say a person's argument is wrong because he had a family member fall in service. So why would we say a person's argument is right because of that fact? We wouldn't, for the same reason that ad hominem is an argumentative fallacy. The messenger and the message are separate. Discrediting the merit of the messenger does not discredit the merit of the message. By extension, crediting the merit of the messenger does not credit the merit of the message. Even when that credit is admirable, even when that credit is emotionally charged. The sky is blue, gravity pulls objects together, and the Constitution has over 200 years of practical application and precedent to which we defer when understanding it. These things are objective truths, and your personal story, no matter how admirable, how heroic, or how sad, does not affect them. Nobody's feelings change fact. What I want is a society, politicians, media, citizenry, that values fact over feelings. Until then, the sky is green, so long as the person who says so has a really, really, really sad story. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at skag underscore three. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.